This video is about how to block damage in World of Tanks. I made a list of uh, different ways to block damage. I'm going to read through the list and then I will explain how to do each one. Uh, the first one is side scraping, which is angling your tank so that the side of your armor or the tracks absorb incoming fire. The second one is angling. Uh, this means that, for example, when you're out in the open, you're going to give your tank a certain angle uh, that allows you to ricochet uh, incoming fire as much as possible. Then you have angling the turret. And what that means is that some turrets, such as an E100, have a flat front, and you don't want the enemy to hit the flat side, so you're going you're gonna to point the corner of your turret uh, towards the enemy. Uh, aiming the turret towards incoming fire. If you get hit and you don't see the enemy, and it says that you got hit on the side, you want to aim your turret so that it's pointing towards incoming fire so that the stronger armor of the front of your turret is aimed towards the enemy instead of the side or rear of your turret. Uh, pointing the rear corner towards incoming fire, uh, what that means is that if you're driving and somebody hits you in the rear and you see where it hits the rear of the tank, you can angle your tank, adjust the angle, so that the corner um, of the tank is pointed towards the enemy, which means they're more likely to ricochet. Uh, pointing the gun over the inside corner, uh, what that means is when you're out in the open, if you aim your gun for most tanks over the inside corner of the track, you're going to get the best angle if the gun is aimed at the enemy. Another technique is to get close to the enemy. Uh, so when you get closer to the enemy, they're more likely to ricochet off the the deck of your tank, of your hull. You don't want them to hit the lower plate. So when you're close, uh, the gun uh, doesn't have a lot of choice as to what it's going to hit. Uh, the other thing you want to do is hide your lower plate. Uh, uh, the lower plate is weak armor, so you don't want the enemy to hit it. There's different ways to hide your lower plate. Uh, being in a hull down position which is the same as hiding your lower plate, uh, having your hull in a position where the enemy can't hit it, which means it would have to be blocked by the slope of the land or by debris or a wall. Watch the enemy gun's aim. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to watch where the enemy is aiming his gun, and you're going to adjust your position or your angle so that he has uh, the worst chance of penetrating your tank. You angle your tank towards SPG incoming fire. Uh, let's say, <coughs> excuse me, if you think that the SPG might shoot at you, you can usually guess where the SPG is located in the game. You have a general idea of where they might be. So what you do is you point the corner of your tank in the direction where you think the SPG, enemy SPG is, and it increases the chance that you'll get a ricochet. For most tanks, you don't want to show your side or rear armor. There's a few exceptions. And the last tip is to use your gun to block the enemy gun. It's been shown that uh, if you are close to the enemy, you can use your gun uh, to block the enemy's fire uh, because the gun uh, doesn't have hit points that will take damage uh, that affects the, hit, the overall hit points of your tank. Uh, so it blocks your tank from uh, losing hit points. Another tip that you use when you're blocking damage is to angle your tank. If you're against two enemy tanks, you're going to angle your tank so that one corner points towards one enemy and the other corner points towards the other enemy. One way to block damage is to keep a good angle directed towards the enemy tank. This would be an example of a bad angle because it shows too much of the side armor. And you'll notice that my gun is auto-aimed on the enemy tank. Now this would be a good angle because it shows an equal amount of the frontal armor and the side armor. You don't want to be head-on like this. Although it's not that bad, it's better to have an angle that's a little bit more like this. So this is what it looks like overhead. You want to have the gun over the inside track. Don't put it directly over the corner. This is a bad angle. It's showing too much of the side. I, When I first started angling, I used to do it like this, and I was getting damaged all the time. And then I learned to bring the gun over the inside a little bit. 
And while you're playing and you're driving, always keep that angle. Keep going back to the inside corner. Even if, if you're, uh, you know, when I play, I'm constantly checking my angle. It's a little bit difficult for me to do it right now because I have a high ping time of 250 milliseconds. But I'm constantly adjusting my angle when I'm playing. If I'm driving around, I will check my angle and even do it over the rear of the tank. One of the techniques you use to block damage is called side scraping. And what that means is you find a corner to block uh, the majority of your tank and you get an angle where the gun is a little bit over the corner. And what will happen is that the enemy will not be able to hit a large portion of your tank because it's being blocked by an object. And the side of your tank, which is the tracks, will absorb the damage from AP and APCR shells. Uh, they're less likely to penetrate. It does not absorb the damage from HE shells. You can still get damage from HE shells. Now, there's different ways to side scrape. You might wonder what angle to use. This would be a bad angle because that's too much. You want to do an angle that uh, hides as much as the front of your tank as possible and keeps the gun over the corner. And then there's something called reverse, guides, reverse side scraping, which is basically to do the reverse, which is an angle like this. And the advantage to this angle is that you can get a sharper angle on the side tracks. If you compare the side tracks now to the way it was over the front of the tracks, you'll see that I get a much better angle, but it may expose the rear of your tank. So those are uh, some techniques you can use to uh, block damage. You'll notice that on this tank, the gun is a little bit to the right, and the commander hatch is a little bit to the left. So what that means is that the commander hatch is a weak point, and it's a little bit to the left, so we're going to try and hide it. And the way you do that is to come up on a corner and point the gun like this around the corner. And then what happens is, I know it's, it's going to be nearly impossible to demonstrate, but the, the building is going to block the commander's hatch and allow the gun to see around the corner. So you have to, you would keep an angle like this, and you can see how the building is going to block that commander's hatch, but still allow you to shoot around the corner. And that's uh, how you protect uh, different parts of your tank from the enemy. There's another technique that you use which is called angling your turret. Right now this gun is pointed directly towards the enemy. So if the enemy is going to aim back at me, he's going to see the flat front of the turret. But you don't want the flat front of your turret facing the enemy. And the reason why is because he's more likely to penetrate. So you want to give a little bit of an angle. If you're firing at the enemy, while you're reloading, what you do is you turn your gun at an angle so that the corner of the flat front is pointing towards the enemy instead of the flat front. And you can do it in either direction. You don't want to turn it so that you show the side. You want to point the corner of the front of the turret towards the enemy. And that will give you an angle that increases the chance that you're going to block damage, especially if you have a tank like the mouse or the E100. Now let's say you're driving somewhere and suddenly a tank shoots at you and you suddenly get hit and let's say he hits you in the rear. If the tank perhaps was behind you, one way that you can block more damage is to turn your turret so your strong armor is in the front. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn your turret so that your stronger armor is facing the direction of incoming fire. You might not know where the enemy is. You might get a hit indicator that says that the enemy is behind you or to your side. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn that turret so that it's pointing that stronger armor towards the enemy, even if you don't know where the enemy is. Sometimes you might be driving and you might get hit in the rear and you'll see where the damage was done to the rear. And if you know using the damage indicator what the direction of fire is, you can turn your tank and point the rear of your tank 
towards where you think the enemy fire is coming from, and you're more likely to ricochet. I had a game on Erlenberg with a Type 5 Heavy, and somebody hit the rear of my tank, and I angled it. And once I angled it, they bounced all the remaining shots because they kept on hitting the corner. If the enemy's using auto-aim, perhaps they're very far away, and you point the corner of your tank, they're going to keep on hitting that corner because the auto-aim will be aiming at the corner of your tank. When you're far from the enemy, you can see all the weak spots. For example, over here on the bottom, it's a giant weak spot. And this plate over here, where it turns red, is where it's going to block damage. And over here, it's green, so we got another weak spot. And over here, it's red, and it's going to block damage. And over here, it's green, another weak spot. And over here, it's red, it's going to block damage. And over here, we've got a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, so it might block damage. You don't want your weak spot to be exposed. So when you're reloading, you're going to get close to the enemy like this. And then when he goes into his sniper mode, he, he can't choose the weak spots. You're going to see a lot more red now. In fact, I can't lower my gun. As you reverse, he has access to more weak spots. And as I reverse even more, he has access to even more weak spots. So when you're reloading, you get close to the enemy. And when you're ready to fire, you reverse so that you can hit those weak spots. Another trick that you're going to do is you're going to try and protect your lower plate. Because your lower plate over here in the bottom is a giant weak spot. You'll notice that the enemy tank is pointing his gun towards my lower plate. My lower plate being right there. If you give him access to that lower plate, if you know he's aiming at it, it you're more likely to take damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my tank to a position like this. I'm watching his gun, and I'm going to move my tank by rotating it so that he has more of an angle on hitting that lower plate. So basically... You want him to see an angle on the lower plate like this instead of one that's head on. So if you notice if you notice that the enemy's gun is aimed at your lower plate, you can angle your tank simply by turning it to give him more of an angle against the front of your tank. Now there's an enemy off in the distance and I want to hide my lower plate. I don't want him to hit the weak lower plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right here by this rubble. Let's see how easy I can park it get as close to the rubble as possible but still stay, stay flat and what will happen is it, at some point it's going to protect your lower plate and give you some additional protection so maybe if I do something more like this you can see now a lot more of my lower plate is hidden at least from this angle from this angle a tank that's in this position would not be able to hit it and there's another position that's called hull down, which not only hides your lower plate, but actually hi hides uh, most of the tank, specifically the hull of the tank, because of the hull of the tank is very weak. And the way you're going to do that is to make sure that your hull is blocked by as much rubble as possible. It also makes you a very small target. If you're out in the open, you might get hit by the SPG. And you might not see the SPG, but you might know that the SPG perhaps is coming from that direction. So what you can do is you angle your tank like this and point the corner of your tank in the direction where you think the SPG is. This way, when he fires at you, you're more likely to ricochet his shot. If you're close to a tank, another trick you can use is you can use your gun to block the enemy shot. And what happens is the ammunition is inside the tank. And it has to shoot down the gun barrel. So if your gun barrel crosses with his gun barrel, he's going to hit your gun barrel before the shot leaves his gun barrel. And the gun barrel doesn't have the same hit points as the hit points of your tank. So it might damage your gun, but it's not going to reduce the hit points overall from your tank. Another way to block damage is to simply use a heavily armored tank such as a Type 5 Heavy. Type 5 Heavy has very strong armor uh, the turret armor is 270 millimeters. And the other hull values are 160 for the side and 150 for the rear. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 270 for the front, 280 for the turret front, 210 for the turret side, and 200 for the turret rear. So if you take out a tank like this 
uh, you're going to block a lot of damage. This tank is the FV215B, and you're going to notice that the turret is in the rear of the tank. When you have a turret in the rear of the tank, it makes it easier to side scrape. Because when you do a side scraping angle, you can get a much better angle with the turret in the rear. If the turret's in the front, it, you could still you. It's more difficult to get an angle because the building that you're going to be behind is going to block your gun. You'll notice that this tank has what we call piked armor, and piked armor gives a natural slope, uh, so that when you're angling, you have to angle it differently. You angling. Uh, by pointing the corner of your tank might not be the best angle. And heading directly head-on, as long as you can block your lower plate, will give you a better angle. So you might want to use a different angle if you have a piked hull. One more way to block damage is to stay far away from the enemy. And for most rounds, like AP and APCR, they are less likely to penetrate as you go a certain distance. And you can look up the penetration charts, and you can see what those distances are when the penetration drops off. And if you know the distance to the enemy, be beyond that distance, and the enemy's shots and rounds will have lower penetration. Of course, with the exception of HE rounds, which do not lose penetration over distance. So... If you want to block damage, one of the things you can do is be spotted with a large tank out in the open, but far from the enemy across an open field. When the enemy fires at you, they're more likely to ricochet. If you look at this particular shell, this is an armor-piercing shell, you're going to notice that there's different penetration values depending on the distance. What I'm doing is I'm, go I'm picking a tank, and then I'm choosing a one of the shells underneath, and it shows a little chart that says average penetration distance. At 100 meters, the penetration is 250, and at 500 meters, the penetration is 240. Uh, higher tier tanks have less of a loss in penetration than lower tier tanks. But if you look at this particular one, at 100 meters, it's 303, but at 500, it's 263, which is uh, more than 10% loss compared to this other one, which isn't even 5% of a loss. And with HE, you can see that there's no such chart. In general, with higher tier tanks, there's less of a loss over distance than with lower tier tanks. So if you play in a low tier tank, you're more likely to, to block damage because of a greater distance than you can do it, than you can do with a higher tier tank. Another way to block damage is to use a spall liner, and there are four different types of spall liners. Uh, this is equipment that you can purchase, and you can use it on uh, most, if not any, tank, and it will protect you against high explosive rounds and against uh, collisions. Uh, it might not give you an increase in block damage in the block damage stats, I don't know if it does or not. However, it will prevent your tank from receiving some damage. And if you have a tank such as a Type 4 Heavy and you use a spall liner, it's going to block you from certain types of damage, for example, from SPGs or from tank destroyers that fire HE rounds at you and things like that. Uh, this is a simple diagram that shows you how to angle against two enemies. Imagine you're the tank at the bottom of the screen, and you've got two enemy tanks that are both uh, aiming at you. You want to angle your tank so that the front left corner is pointed in the direction of one enemy tank, and the front right corner is pointed in the direction of the other enemy tank. And when you do this, you get the best angle against both tanks. It's not the best angle against one tank, but against both average together, it is the best angle that you're going to get. 